So we all know that sunny days are best for solar generation, but I've been making some interesting observations recently that uh, made me start to wonder if that's actually always the case. So let me show you what I mean. So this is the best day of solar generation we've had so far this summer. Uh, now we have an east-west split array that totals 6.8 uh, kilowatt peak. Um, and that means that we get this interesting shape. It looks a little bit like a sort of slice through a fondant fancy. This is what we call a fondant fancy day. Uh, so you get this big uh, sharp um, increase at the beginning of the day, um, this bump in the middle, and then another sharp decrease uh, at the um, end of the day. Now, there should be a little bit of extra generation in this gap here and in this gap here because there are some trees that provide a little bit of shade first thing in the morning and last thing in the evening. That's why this uh, this cliff is so steep um, because uh, the, the sun disappears behind the trees. But even so, this is what we would consider um, a perfectly cloudless day, giving us a nice smooth curve of generation. Now you can see that it peaks at roughly 4.6 kilowatts, something in that ballpark. And this is just at the beginning, beginning of June, so it's um, close to what we would expect to see in terms of the maximum output we would get from our combined 6.8 kilowatt east-west split array. So we ma we're going to max out just shy of 5 kilowatts on a sunny day at the height of summer. However, there were other days where there were obviously some clouds in the sky, but um, we had a much more interesting pattern of generation. This is the plot of our solar generation from the 15th of May. Now we generated 30.5 kilowatt hours on this day, which uh, is a little bit less than the just shy of 40 kilowatt hours that we generated on the 2nd of June. Um, obviously it's a couple of weeks earlier in the year, so the sun is a little bit lower, not much, but a little bit. Um, but interestingly, you can see, um, obviously it wasn't uh, a perfectly smooth cloudless day. There are certainly some clouds getting in the way, but interestingly, the actual peak uh, output that we got on this day was just over six kilowatts. So you can see there and there, in fact, 6.1 kilowatts um, at about half, uh, 20 past one. Now that is significantly higher than the um, four and a half odd kilowatts that we generated at the peak on the 2nd of June. Now I believe that this is because the clouds on this day were actually, as well as getting in the way of the sun, um, when they weren't in what in the way of the sun they were actually providing extra generation that meant that our arrays were gathering a little bit more light from the sky from the ambient sky and generating a little bit more power than they would have done if it was just a purely cloudless day uh, with just the the full sun uh, landing on the panels and in fact on the 27th of may we generated 34 kilowatt hours so not a million miles off the 40 that we generated on the 2nd of june but on this particular day we actually uh, peaked at 6.9 kilowatts um, at about 10 to 12. Now that is remarkable because it's actually higher than the peak rating of our array of uh, 6.8 uh, kilowatts. Now um, obviously we're east-west split so we're never really ever likely to get to 6.8 kilowatts yet here on this day we actually exceeded it. Uh, now I know obviously there are some um, uh, slight differences in the outputs of the panels so when it says the array it peaks at 6.8 kilowatts it could be that actually theoretically you could get a little bit more than that if the individual panels on the roof uh, were rated slightly higher than um, than what they um, mentioned in their specs but even so uh, with an east-west split you're never likely to get more than uh, even close to the, the the theoretical maximum output so the fact that we got 6.9 kilowatts on this particular day is quite remarkable actually so here's a good illustration of what I think is going on. So this is a photograph I took earlier today and it was quite a sunny day to start with in fact um, but during the course of the morning the clouds started to build up a little bit but you can see what's happening here. We've got full sun but nearby the cloud that's near the sun, um, certainly this bit along the edge here, is actually quite bright, brighter than the sky um, that's uh, behind it. Uh, so what I think is going on is that the sun, we're getting obviously generation from the direct sun but all this extra brightness from the sky um, with the cloud cover here is adding a little bit of extra generation um, ambient light that the panels can make use of. Now obviously this really dark bit over here is where the cloud gets super thick so by the time you get really thick cloud that builds up to the point where it actually starts looking dark here that's going to start to then hit your generation even if the sun is fully on your panels I think this might actually reduce the sky brightness a little bit so it's always going to be a balance between how much sort of thin wispy bright cloud there is and how much really dark thick cloud there is so the reason it gets dark obviously um, is that the light from the sun 
uh, gets scattered and absorbed by the water droplets in the cloud. So when there's not a, not much thickness in, in the cloud, a lot of that light will scatter around and then come back down to the ground. Whereas if it's a really thick cloud, then it will just get all absorbed into the uh, into the body of the cloud. So it, none of that light will will come through. Um, so yeah, it's always going to be a balance. Now what that got me thinking actually, what's the optimal amount of cloud cover for solar generation? Obviously, this is probably a bit much, uh, you know, by the time you get to this level of thickness of cloud, that's going to be too much and it's going to start being detrimental uh, to your generation. But what if you had lots of little wispy clouds like these ones down here? If you had enough of those, as long as they weren't passing in front of the sun too often, maybe that would actually give you more generation, more kilowatt hours generated in a day than a purely cloudless day. I wonder what that fraction is. So yeah, that got me wondering, is it going to be, you know, 5%, 10% cloud cover, something along those those lines? I don't know. Um, theoretically, I'm sure it could be possible to work it out. Um, but yeah, it's not always the case, I don't think, that a purely cloudless day is going to be the one that gives you the absolute maximum total amount of uh, generation in that day. So let's take a quick look at the generation from when I actually took that photograph. So this is the uh, the start of the day, pretty cloudless in fact. Pretty standard uh, increase in the slope uh, up towards that bump that I was talking about with the Fondant Fancy Day. And uh, I took that photograph at exactly 11 o'clock, which is, funnily enough, exactly when the generation peaked at 5.2 kilowatts. Now, on a pure Fondant Fancy Day, I'd be expecting uh, about 4 kilowatts at this point. You can see this uh, this track here is uh, it gets to about 4 kilowatts at 10.30. It might end up a little bit higher than that, maybe 4.3, 4.4 kilowatts by 11 o'clock, but certainly not as high as 5.2. So this, I think that illustrates my point quite nicely that when that cloud started to get towards the sun, that extra brightness along the rim of the of those clouds just bumped up the generation a little bit. Of course, the uh, the clouds then went in front of the sun and it crashed completely, which uh, you know drops it down right the way down to 1.3 kilowatts. So um, yeah, it's uh, it swings and roundabouts, obviously. Um, but you know, later in the day, we've had a few more little spikes 5.8 6.3 kilowatts so yeah it's been a bit of a mixed bag today it'll be interesting to see what the total generation worked out at at the end of the day um, but yeah that's uh, that's my obs interesting observations uh, that I thought I would share with you today so I'd be interested to hear if anyone else has noticed a similar phenomenon in their own data uh, and in fact if you've noticed a day where there's been a bit of cloud and you've ultimately generated more than you would have done on an equivalent sun, sunny perfectly cloudless day. Um, so yeah, let me know. But that's it for now. Uh, thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.